So welcome to our fifth cross-company community manager call. We are happy to have you here today. It's yeah, the fifth time we are here together. So about one year ago, some of us as community managers in different um, big corporations started this initiative to have the chance to share experiences, to learn from each other, as we are very convinced about the power of communities. And so we are happy that this has been evolving over the time and that we are growing and winning more and more participants here. So warm welcome. So this is our team. So let me make this one, yeah. From different companies, as just said, so we are here from Daimler, from um, the Cognium GmbH, from Siemens, from Chef, ZF, Bosch, and myself, Stephanie Preisinger from Continental. And here, and also today, we will have a format where we have different people um, presenting us use cases. But before that, let's have maybe a short hint to um, the technique, to the tool that we are using. Well, I guess in the current situation now, we are kind of um, used to different digital tools and one of them is Zoom that we are using here today. So as you see in the left um, corner below, you have the possibility to mute or unmute yourself if you would like to share um, a comment. And you can also start um, your video in there. So for the presenters, but we already tested that here on the right side, you have the possibility to share your screen. Another important disclaimer in the beginning is um, this antitrust and security code of conduct. So as we are here from different companies and well, so not an, from internal or um, this is publicly available and will also be shared later on, it is very important to note that we are also only talking about information that can be publicly shared related to communities and not any internal or um, privately confidential data in here. So that's imp important and actually the only of, um, yeah, official part in the beginning to say, and after that now let's have a look on our topics today. So after this short welcome, we will have an, inter uh, an interactive part with Mentimeter, where I will hand over to Simon, and then also continue with Simon from the Cognium GmbH with the so-called DROG um, 2020, the first use case to share uh, some insights with us when it comes to the power of community for learning. And we will hear about a virtually distributed community management um, community event which um, gives, an, gives us an insight on how a community can achieve self-organized self -organized go um, goals in a self-organized way. So we will hear about 10 minutes from Simon um, about the topic and then you will also have the possibility to ask some questions. And then we will hand over to Beate Strittmatter and Madeleine Müller who I'm very happy to have in our call here today as special guests to give, an, give us an insight on the learning channels, a challenge at ZF and the experience they have met, made during this, during this challenge conducted there internally. And after that, we will have an open discussion. And as you've seen in the, in the event, there was a link um, to the marketplace that will also be in here and we will share in the chat to raise some questions in here and so that we can have a discussion before we end one after one hour of here. So who are we here having here today so that you have a picture um, of those people. So Madeleine Müller and Berta Stuttmer as Mata as said from ZF and Simon Lückert here as we will share this later on and we have the, um, the link to their profiles because well communities are there to connect people and so we also have a lot of possibilities to connect and LinkedIn or Twitter is a great chance to do so. Yeah, and with this I'm already happy to hand over to Simon. And 
I'm starting. We are recording. To share my screen. So welcome to our fifth cross company community manager call. We are happy to have you here today. It's yeah, the fifth time we are here together. So about one year ago, some of us as community managers in different um, big corporations started this initiative to have the chance to share experiences, to learn from each other, as we are very convinced about the power of communities. And so we are happy that this has been evolving over the time and that we are growing and winning more and more participants here. So warm welcome. So this is our team. So let me make this smaller, yeah. From different companies, as just said, so we are here from Daimler, from um, the Cognium GmbH, from Siemens, from Chef, ZF, Bosch, and myself, Stephanie Preisinger from Continental. And here, and also today, we will have a format where we have different people um, presenting us use cases but before that, let's have maybe a short hint to um, the technique, to the tool that we are using. Well, I guess in the current situation now, we are kind of um, used to different digital tools and one of them is Zoom that we are using here today. So as you see in the left um, corner below, you have the possibility to mute or unmute yourself if you would like to share um, a comment. And you can also start um, your video in there so for the presenters but we already tested that here on the right side you have the possibility to share your screen another important disclaimer in the beginning is um, this antitrust and security code of conduct so as we are here from different companies and well so not and in, from internal or um, this is publicly available and will also be shared later on it is very important to note that we are also only talking about information that can be publicly shared related to communities and not any internal or um, privately confidential data in here. So that's imp important and actually on the um, yeah, official part in the beginning to say, and after that now let's have a look on our topics today. So after this short welcome, we will have an, inter uh, an interactive part with Mentimeter where I will hand over to Simon and then also continue with Simon from the Cognion GmbH with the so-called DROG um, 2020, the first use case to share uh, some insights with us when it comes to the power of community for learning. And we will hear about a virtually distributed community management um, community event which um, gives, an, gives us an insight on how a community can achieve self-organized self-organized um, goals in a self-organized way. So we will hear about 10 minutes from Simon um, about the topic and then you will also have the possibility to ask some questions. And then we will hand over to Beate Strittmatter and Madeleine Müller who I'm very happy to have in our call here today as special guests to give, an, give us an insight on the learning channels, a challenge at ZF and the experience they have met, made during this, during this challenge conducted there internally. And after that, we will have an open discussion. And as you've seen in the, in the event, there was a link um, to the marketplace that will also be in here and we will share in the chat to raise some questions in here and so that we can have a discussion before we end one after one hour of here. So who are we here having here today so that you have a picture um, of those people. So Madeleine Müller and Berta Stuttmer as Mata as said from ZF and Simon Lückert here as we will share this later on and we have the, um, the link to their profiles because well communities are there to connect people and so we also have a lot of possibilities to connect and LinkedIn or Twitter is a great chance to do so. 
Yeah, and with this, I'm already happy to hand over to Simon. Perhaps I have a little fuck up because I didn't prepare anything on Menti. I thought we'd do it with the uh, pad from Harald. Was this wrong? Oh, we are okay then. Sorry for that. If we also do already this on Menti, uh, on the Etherpad, then I do apologize. Oh, no, so and perhaps it's my fault. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but I didn't prepare a Menti. What did we say to uh, make on the Menti? Perhaps I, I did it wrong. No problem. I, I guess we, we can use uh, the Etherpad. Okay. Yes, I think so too. So the question is only do we want to do that now in the beginning or we leave that with later on? Maybe it's a good idea. Uh, we have here some leading questions prepared for you just to get us a little bit focused on what's going to happen during the next hour. Uh, maybe we have the chance to, to share some, yeah, some of your moods and minds. What, is in your, what comes into your mind uh, in these days of crisis? Uh, and leading us to some other leading questions. What is different? What has changed in communities, in learning communities? What is emerging? What is diminishing? And finally, maybe you have some other topics as well. So feel free uh, to use uh, the link uh, from the invitation to jump into this either bed. We can work simultaneously on all that stuff. And I'll invite you just to share some ideas of you. There's nothing to, 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 to be able to make wrong or right here. <laughs> it's just to get an overview of your moods and minds. And you should use uh, the second link that Rebecca posted, the meet.cognion.de. Uh, Achim posted the Sumpad before, but uh, Hardy uh, sent a message that we had, that the Sumpad service had technical problems this morning. So we used the, the meet.cognion.de link. So what comes into your mind in these times of, of crisis where especially communities play a very important role and can be a, can be a catalyzer for when it comes to learning? Everything becomes calmer. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I'm sh I'm seeing here this message that the connection was was um divided uh, separated. So I was afraid I got lost. Now, what else are we coming? Uh, are we coming in here? We get to know each other. Yes. When it comes to differences, digital communication and collaboration get more more important. Exactly. So, as a lot of um, pictures, discussions have been shared in that regard also on social, on social networks and even figured out that, that probably this, uh, this special situation was yeah, the major use for all digital transformation and for digital tools, more digital engagement. And we have some two further questions. What is emerging? What is diminishing? Feel free to add everything that is coming to your mind in here. Devani, I think you have to refresh because yeah. there's plenty more. I just saw it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the hint. So, of course, so it's not only about, so where on one hand it is a big advantage when it comes to um, boosting the usage of the different tools that we have. Of course, it is also obvious that the personal contact is missing a lot. However, there are great possibilities to do that on a virtual level. People are ready and now see that it's working quite well to work 
in this way and that you can also have um, great ways of exchange, interactive ways. Oh, somebody is also afraid that home office could end afterwards again. <laughs> <laughs> What's different? Video conferencing is getting normal, exactly. I think we also see that uh, finally that work is actually not a physical state. It is more a, an attitude, it is a state of mind. It, and as long as the result is there, it actually doesn't not, does not matter where I am. So many possibilities to learn. It's easier to build communities. Also, what we are doing here is establishing a community of community managers, people passionate about communities. Oh yes, there was the We VFS Virus Hackathon initiated by Bundesregierung, which was the, the biggest virtual hackathon that has ever taken place diminishing informal exchange fear yes of course so there's a lot of fear there's a lot of uncertainty and that's even again why communities are so crucial to connect people and to have a feeling of belonging to have the possibility to exchange our thoughts well yeah what will be there afterwards so what will the post-corona time look like. Of course, if somebody would like to add any comments here verbally, feel also free to do so. More time for things to do. I guess it's a great way now to have a better work-life integration. It's different what has changed is also that of course um, we are way more together with our family with we have time for more time for those relationships for the family relationship but of course have to yeah, get rid of connection with or meeting, meeting up friends and face-to-face -face contact with further people. All right, so we will, that will stay open and you will be able to add further comments maybe during the upcoming inspiration that we have there will be further points that come to your mind and we will take a look at that in the end again and as said also have the possibility to discuss on here and with that i'd say um we move on and hear about the first um the first use case from uh, from Simon when it comes to the COVID uh, to the DIVOC 2020. Right. So then Perhaps I will stop you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear yes. you. Yeah, perhaps up front, it, it will be a little bit different story because it's of uh, not internal corporate community, but uh, a story about um, the global communities of hackers and IT security people and also digital artists and activists. Uh, it will be a story about the an event of the Chaos Computer Club, uh, which of course wasn't uh, was, we weren't able to run that in a physical space and have to bring that to digital in a few months. I just want to share that story with you. So I share my screen. Just give me a short signal if you see that. Yes, you are. I just put you together the the links that I use in a in a pad as well. So I share this in the chat later on. So you have all the links. 
Uh, just a little bit of history. The Chaos Computer Club is a very old uh, community. It was founded in 1984. And it's a, a, a community of people who are very left, leftish, I'd say, uh, a lot of socialists and a lot of left-wing people and, and um, people who care for the society and want to make uh, society a better world through technology. So it's not only IT sec people, but it's also a lot of people who are activists or who are creatives bringing uh, kids towards technology, doing uh, coder dojos and hacker spaces and so on. So just, uh, just a little bit of background. The Chaos Computer Club has two main events. Uh, one is the Congress uh, between uh, Christmas and um, Sylvester, like New Year's Eve, uh, with around 17,000 people joining. And uh, this normally runs in Leipzig, uh, it ran in Leipzig last, last year. And uh, then there's a very big event called the Easter Hack. Um, I should have put you the website as well. This year, the Easter hack should have been taken part in Hamburg, uh, but due to coronavirus, it had to be uh, like canceled there. Um, we have one sub community in the club. It's called the WOC, uh, the Video Operations Center. There's it's a special unit who just covers all the events with video live streaming. All the talks get, li get live streamed and recorded. They get live streamed to the hacker spaces. Uh, they get uh, translated, like you get a simultaneous translation of the talks, German, English, English, German, also French sometimes. And this unit uh, uh, consists out of people who ran a lot of infrastructure for the German universities, uh, like streaming uh, lectures from the lecture rooms there and so on. And they bring the technology also to the club events to stream that. And I will get back later to that. There's the uh, media CCCDE. Uh, this is just sort of the of a YouTube for the Chaos Computer Club, and you can find all the recordings of all conferences and community events there to be there for later education and uh, uh, to re-watch uh, the videos and so on, have a, have a knowledge base of talks recorded. And this, uh, this unit, like this video operation center, they said uh, it's not a good idea to just uh, skip the Easter hack and make the next one next, next year, but we want to run it on a virtual uh, basis. And they drove from, I think, early February onwards, uh, a concept to bring the whole event with around, uh, I think, like 1,500 or 2,000 people online. And I just want to talk a little bit about the decisions and the infrastructure elements that we used. Uh, one was a wiki platform based on DocuWiki. Uh, I just bring you to the uh, English front page. I think this is the very, very best uh, logo that they might choose for the event. Like it's the, the rocket is like the symbol for the case computer club. And then you have this rabbit for the Easter hack and the rabbit has sort of a uh, headset on his ears because the rabbit has to be remote. And the whole process ran pretty much the same way like it would have ran in, in the physical space. There are uh, three elements that the event normally consists of. Uh, one are curated talks um, as sort of a, in a conference style where people from the community talk about their projects, what they are doing, uh, what's going on, what's new in technology. This is uh, called in German the Fahrplan. It's like the timetable in a, in a train station. Uh, and it has uh, this pretty much the same, um, the same format. You just have the individual days, you have the time schedule, you have the, the talks over here. You can click on each talk and you just get the short description and you get a pad for documentation. We use the same technology or pretty much the same technology uh, for each of the talks. So everybody could write a collaborative documentation of the talks. Uh, and you have all the recordings for all the talks here, like for this two day event or three day event over Easter, you have all the talks that were given at the community event here and you can just play it back and, and listen to it. There are audio versions, but also video versions. Then the uh, second element are so-called uh, lightning talks. Uh, there are a lot of things going on in the community which don't deserve to get a 50 uh, or, or one hour slot in the FAR plan, but it's just enough to have a five minute short introduction of the topic. And therefore in the wiki, um, we just had this, uh, this table where people could put themselves in in five minute time slots and they write here what they're talking about. 
short description, who will the person be that talks, uh, Twitter handle or things like that. And it just filled up in a very self-organized way. And the same took part for the so-called self-organized sessions. These are typically uh, one or two hour sessions ran by community members where they do some hands-on workshops, showing people something, teaching something, uh, talking about things, exchanging information. This was run in a, we called it uh, bring your own video service mode. Uh, we had just a session list over here. Oops, uh, session list. Uh, it was also important to have, um, um, sorry, that's only in German, uh, to have a description for all the community members how to run a self-organized session. So you have all the uh, important information here, how this works. And then people can just put themselves in, uh, in the schedule. And um, as you can see, these are dates in the future. I will talk about that in a minute, why, why this is in that way. This was the original timetable for the self-organized session, starting Friday, 10th of April, and then Saturday, 11th of April, and then a little bit down Sunday, 12th of April, like a typical community bar camp running over the weekend. And the fun thing was that people said, since it's virtually, we don't have the restriction to stop the event on Sunday, it can run on theoretically forever. So since it's a wiki, people just added more entries and the event is still running. It's still ongoing. There are sessions 22nd, 23rd, 24th. There's program up to the 27th. And I think there will be more, se even more se sessions after the 27th. Uh, so this is what I really like about going with the event from physical to digital that, that you don't have the, um, the boundaries that you have in the physical space, uh, in the virtual space. And for all the sessions, you have recordings and documentation, like um, meeting notes, people write together what the result of this session is. And this is pretty much, even if it's an external example of a community event from a uh, not corporate community, I think a lot of the, the principles and the structural oh, yeah. elements. You uh, sorry, please uh, mute your fo phones, mute your, mic mute your mics. Yeah, and just as a, as a last element, what I think is important, and then we might have some questions left. Um, uh, I think what is very difficult in running a community event online is that you're missing um, the, the the whole informal communication, drinking a coffee together, just bumbling into a group of people that you haven't seen for a long time. Everything that happen, uh, happens in the physical space, it's really difficult to run that in video conferences. Uh, and therefore, um, we have a IRC server. IRC is a very old form of chat communication. And we had just a room, like you see over here, the, the DVOC room. Uh, for the event, and this was sort of the virtual uh, launch of the event. All the people who showed up, uh, who had questions about when will the next talk be, where is the wiki, how do I connect to that video conferencing service and so on, they could just come to that chat room, ask their questions, there were always some, some people hanging out, uh, creating new chat rooms, talking to each other, this worked very, very well. So if you talk about a corporate community context, you might think of tools like uh, Microsoft Teams or Slack or Rocket Chat or Threema groups or something like that to also have this element of launches and, and space where um, informal and not planned things might happen also online. So this perhaps as a sh short overview, um, my clock says, my stopwatch here says that we have five minutes left. So if you want to, you might ask some questions or give some comments on that perhaps a little bit strange community case in terms of a corporate community uh, community call. As long as you think, if you have questions, I just put you the, the link to the pad in the chat. I know, Steffi, have there been any questions or, or remarks in the chat? No, I just wanted to say so far we have no questions there. So There's one coming in per audio. Howdy here. Uh, how many people joined uh, over the days? Do you have an idea? 
It's difficult to say. I think the big talks had about um, seven, eight hundred people watching the live streams. Um, I think we recorded about two thousand people joining the IRC chat, uh, and then there were self-organized sessions. I was in with around from small sessions with about twenty people up to sessions with a hundred, even two hundred, uh, something, something around that. So I would say perhaps like three or four thousand uh, unique people joined over these three days in, in one or several of the events. Interesting. So Thank now you. we have another question. Um, what was your role in this, Simon? Pardon? What? What was your role in this community, in the setup of the, of the Devo community? Well, I'm, I'm uh, part of the podcasting community, which is very closely related to the WOC because uh, video and audio streaming technology is, is pretty similar. So normally on the case computer events, I'm, I'm part of the planning team of the um, podcasting assembly. Uh, and now I just help to uh, form the structural elements and the sessions in, in the wiki, in the Stoku wiki. Uh, to bring the information there online, to uh, adjust the FAQs, uh, to help people get onboarded. Interesting. And then we have another question. What could be the top takeaways also in regards um, to learnings for corporates, for organizations? Well, I think um, what, what I think is very important is that for communication and documentation in the community, you need a central place for such an event. And this space has to be uh, very participatory. Like uh, we, we, mm -hmm. we took the decision to have, or at each Congress each year, we have an individual wiki for each Congress and everything inside that wiki is related to the Congress. This is in terms of documentation. You have a central point to go to where you find all things and you can edit any page. Like any community member, if I say I want to run a, another session tonight at 11 p.m., I can just click the edit button in the in the wiki and then just edit it. You see it here, you have the, the register and um, login button, so everybody can change the program and improve the content. And the same counts for communication. I think you need sort of a informal communication channel for that event to support also all these informal gatherings, people coming together, you, you learn about people you didn't know before. Mm -hmm. If you run such a community event in a, in a way, uh, like a series of webinars, uh, you have a series of video conference links and you just join the video conference and you have PowerPoint slides, somebody's talking out of the PowerPoint slides, uh, no community activities will happen there or it's, mm -hmm. it's not very probable. And I think this is something one can learn from such kind of communities for the corporate world as well. Very interesting. So, so we are already at the end of time. But I, so as last question, um, how did you promote this, this event to attract so many people and probably also to make it on an ongoing success? Well, uh, in that community, that's not really a big problem when we have the, the yearly conference. For example, last year we had 17,000 tickets and it's normally the way is to the hacker spaces like the local communities, half of the tickets is spread. So you get your ticket for sure. And the other tickets go in two rounds to sell them. And the tickets are sold out in about a second. Like if you're a second too late, well. you don't get a ticket. So as soon as the information is spread, People know that, uh, or at least in a, a minute or later, they know that the event will take place and, and everybody knows that this is uh, the community event now. And since it was a replacement for the Easter hack, of course, everybody who was who registered for the, East, for the physical Easter hack got informed as well. And everything else that the sessions are ongoing just happened out of the community, just emerged. Somebody said, I didn't have time at the Easter holidays because I had to go mm -hmm. with my family. I run my session on Monday. And then another one came and say, I do it on Friday. So I think this is wow. good to, to enable emergence and, and self-organization in the mm -hmm. Yeah, that shows once people are really motivated about a topic that this is what makes that working. And as also Harald mentioned, maybe as last thought on here, that it's more about a mindset that is yeah, yeah, really driving that forward, right? So right. that's 
it is. So thanks a lot, Simon. That was a very interesting insight. And well, you call it digital distributed online cows, but actually it seems very well organized in a self-organized way. So thanks for that. And with this, we are ready for our next topic and um, the learning challenge at ZF. And I'm very curious to hear what this is about from Madeleine and Piate. Hi, thank you for introducing us. I hope you can hear me, hear me clearly. Um, I didn't, or I switched off my video because I had some network issues, but I hope it's working quite good now. Yes, I think uh, Simon needs to stop sharing. This would be great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out. And we can start. Thank you. Great. So now you should all be able to see our presentation, I hope. Yes, we can see it. Yep. Great, thank you. So this is Madeline speaking. And uh, Beat and me together, we yeah, created or conducted the Learning Challenge 2020 within ZF. Um, yeah, everything was um, about learning and to enable ZF employees more to really build a strong learning mindset and create new learning habits. And even uh, though everything was virtually, it took place in the very beginning of the year. So without any Corona crisis um, impact, <laughs> but still I think, um, yeah, it was very nice to see that it worked out very well virtually as well. So um, why is it so important for ZF to really foster learning culture? I think we are all on the very same page here. Last year, together with SKILL, the Swiss Center of Innovative Learning, um, it belongs to the Swiss University, um, we conducted a learning culture analysis, which also had as a result that for um, most of all the informal learning wasn't that important to ZF employees as is the formal learning. And also, for example, the support of the managers when it comes to learning is not, well, it could be higher in some areas and um, educational learning itself. Yeah, we, we just wanted to improve it and to really um, get everyone on board because we are a very big company and some of our um, colleagues, of course, are a bit further away from all the digital stuff and of course also the digital learning. Um, that's why we thought we just try to start um, in the very beginning and to introduce all the different learning formats and all the different terms when it comes to digital learning to them step by step. So of course, um, topics like agility or new work or innovative culture, team beat silo and digitalization were all part of the learning challenge, but we really tried to um, put everything on a very low level to yeah, get everyone on board. At least that was our goal. And um, especially this uh, side of the CEO Citibank um, yeah, was very important and interesting for us. Um, and we also thought, okay, our employees need really to take control of their own development and not always say it's the manager who has to do it or who has to support me, but I need to do it myself and I need to be able to know what I need to learn or how I can improve my skills uh, and stuff like that. Especially in fast changing times, it's also written on the slide, uh, even before Corona, um, it, it was very important that it still is, of course. And then we thought in our department, which is called Global Learning, that it could be a great initiative to yeah, make uh, an effort um, with regard to digitalization and learning and just yeah, create more awareness of all those topics and start discussions and maybe get to know new colleagues we've never been in touch before and just spread the word throughout ZF um, as good as we can. 
So to give a short overview, um, we thought the learning challenge could be conducted as a corporate MOOC. So all in all, it lasted 15 days, so three working weeks. And every day there was a different topic, a different small input or some content and one challenge. And the challenge was um, a question where everyone could participate easily and just discuss in a forum. So it was yeah, very easy, at least that's what we hoped, that people could engage in the topics, discuss, share their experiences, and also um, read the experiences of other colleagues, write them, like them, and get to know each other a bit better. To make it more tangible, every day had a different motto. So every Monday was a motivational Monday, every Tuesday a TED Tuesday, and so on, so that we could align the content a bit better to the different topics and people would more or less know what will happen on that very day. And um, how did we do that? So as I said before, we facilitated it as a corporate MOOC. We used um, SAP Jam. I don't know if all of you know it. It belongs to SAP Success Factor, which is our internal um, learning management system at ZF. And SAP Jam is a collaborative space where you can add different widgets, for example, a blog, a forum, you can upload content, create different small spaces. So yeah, all in all, like every other um, LMS we know, just looks a bit like SAP. Um, and there we try to really store or uh, pile every content we had. And every day we um, activated the new day so people couldn't see everything in the very beginning but um, step by step we released the new topics so people were able to really catch up to have a look at it every day uh, without a lot of time effort because uh, yeah we knew that not everyone have has uh, an hour or two every day for learning and not every topic is interesting for everyone as well so we thought if we just put um, smaller learning nuggets, then people can decide which topic is relevant for them and then they can decide if they want to participate on a Monday or on a Thursday and of course they didn't have to participate every day. Um, we also wanted to share a lot of things we already had in place. So for example, there were already a lot of web-based trainings um, we used, we also have LinkedIn Learning implemented within ZF, so we also promoted a lot of our LinkedIn Learning courses because we thought we already have a lot of great projects or things we can share, but people do not really know them already. So that's why we also thought, okay, it's a good chance also for us to use things we already have. And then every week there were two live sessions. Um, some days on Monday, some days on Tuesday, but always on a Friday. And in those live sessions, we invited other colleagues of ZF who shared um, certain information or their experience on a different topic. So for example, Rebecca also uh, joined one session once and talked about community management, but we also had other colleagues talking about agility or about um, using Scrum or other things. And this was also a very nice way to really get in touch with our participants of the learning challenge and they could also ask questions in the end, of course. We only used internal resources and we tried to communicate everything um, via our ZF intranet, which is also called Zoom. But we also get in touch with our regional or local HR colleagues so that they could also spread the information. For example, in Asia Pacific, most of them are not really active in our intranet. That's why they are still yeah, using email notifications or emails as a communication method. And so we try to really reach all the different regions as well. And 
to get to know the topics a bit better, you can see here a short, very short summary of the three weeks. So the first week was all about digital learning. Um, it was about gamification, what is gamification and some examples, storytelling, also Articulate 360. This is an authoring tool we have within ZF um, with which you can create web-based trainings or beyond, uh, which you can use to create explainer videos. So we really tried to introduce the different things we already have. The second week was about learning mindset, um, about working out loud, learning organization, agile learning, workplace learning, and the last week about social learning. Um, also, we talked a bit about cross-company costs, at least Rebecca did, <laughs> about social collaboration and the different tools we have within ZF and how we can differentiate them. And yeah, so every day, a different content, a different challenge, and we were very happy with the participation. So we had over 1,000 people participate, participating. That was um, very good. In the beginning, we expected maybe, I don't know, 300 or 400 um, people to participate. And in the end, it was far more, so that was very nice. And I think the last, yeah, the last slide we can share is a screenshot of our learning um, platform in Jam. Unfortunately, we cannot really sh share um, the platform now because Beate and me are both um, dialed in with our private laptop. Um, but just to get a small idea so you can see the overview and then week three next to it. And so we, we tried to have every week um, week one and week two and week three, of course, in another tab. And if you click on that tab, you can see Monday to Friday. And um, thus we tried to compile or yeah, to organize all the content. Okay, so far from my side, I don't know, Beate, did I miss something? I'm just thinking, but I think you mentioned everything. And it's a pity that we cannot show a little bit more of the platform, but maybe we can add some additional screenshots for the documentation mm -hmm. later on. Because what would or what was really nice, it was the first time that we really had this social learning approach and used the communities for interaction and also had the challenges with the small tasks in the forum. And this was really fun as an organizer to see how many um, employees and colleagues shared interesting posts and shared their opinion and also commented um, on the opinion or the posts of the others. And this was really great to see. And I think um, here you just need to be bold in your organization if it's the first time for you, but um, at least in our case, it was working quite well. So, um, but if you have questions or um, anything um, you would be interested a little bit more. Maybe we have one or two minutes in addition to, to answer your questions now. I have a question, uh, Martina speaking, um, but it, uh, only, I think it only concerns the, the German market. Mm -hmm. um, did you have any conflicts with the uh, Works Council here? I mean, did you need time to prepare that? I mean, it was before yeah. Corona, but mm -hmm. just briefly, uh, what is your experience with that? Yeah, um, of course, you need to involve the Workers' Council and um, give them an update. And we had some questions um, due to the language issue, for example. So they asked us, OK, it's in English, so it's um, hard for some of our employees in Germany to really discuss and follow everything. Therefore, we try to provide at least most of the content um, dual lingual, so in German and English. So this was something um, we added. And actually, um, we kind of had the agreement with the Workers' Council that it's a pilot. Um, so we just wanted to see if it's working. And um, yeah, it was kind of a dry run. Um, but of course, for the next time, if we do it again, we need to also involve the local Workers' Council. So it, uh, in this case, we only discussed it with the Global or with the Central Workers' Council, and it was fine for the pilot. But if we would like to do it again, what we plan to do, um, we also need to involve the local workers' council. And another issue was we focused on the white color, so the office workers. Um, and 
For the next time, we should also think about how to involve blue collar workers or yeah, people or employees who work close to the production line and also include them so that it's yeah, kind of fair for everybody and everybody has the chance um, to join the learning challenge. But it was quite easy, I would say, but of course you need to involve them at an early stage. Thank you. Great, thank you a lot. And with, so as you were talking, just mm -hmm. uh, just telling that next time you plan also to involve blue color workers and further groups, so that shows that um, you will continue with that and you will do that learning challenge again too, mm -hmm. as this was also a question here. Yeah, yeah, we plan to do it now every year. So in, always in the beginning, um, due to our experience, it was quite a good timing. So start the year fresh and motivated and to use the, the first month, so to say, to learn and yeah, discuss topics with your colleagues was quite a good timing. So we plan to do it next year again. And yeah, we want to expand it. At the moment, we also uh, do kind of a smaller learning challenge for our leaders within ZF. So that's all, already, so to say, the second time, but yeah, in a smaller version. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I really like how you made people curious about learning with those different topics and the way you set it up. It's, it's great. And when they ask the last question, what would you, what do you, would you think make, uh, worked best to make people coming forward and to interact in there? Mm, I think one good thing or one tip is to start really small so that the first challenges were really small tasks like um, oh I don't remember the first one but say sometimes they were like share one of the most important learnings you had today or when we had for example one day was focusing on pros and cons of digital learning and what works good for you personally and then everybody just shared a good example for uh, uh, digital learning, for example. So it was quite easy to start and some challenges were a little bit yeah, more to discuss, And but the first one were really easy. And what was also, I think, something which helped us was to really explain everything really basic and always tell the employees, please just start and yeah, discuss with your colleagues and make a small contribution and even a like is a good contribution and when you start with those little steps then for many of them was easy to start and then also to do bigger posts or yeah longer posts um, in the mm -hmm. chat and also in the forum. We also had a very positive atmosphere. Beate and me also tried to share pictures of us for example in the end of the week and say yay congrats to everyone thank you that you joined to make it very personal as well and a lot of people also shared or gave the feedback in the end that they felt very comfortable in sharing things themselves they never did it before neither in our intranet or in another community at work they started it within the learning challenge and they have made a lot of positive or nice experiences and that was also a very nice thing for us as well and it was very good for the community itself that we had such a positive atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Great, so do we have any further questions or otherwise I think just the agreement that it's a great insight so thanks a lot for being here with us today, Madeline and Beate. It's a very cool challenge that you set up here and well, let's just start showing how, yeah, how to establish a learning culture in an organization, which is so important as in such a digital, fast changing, um, volatile world. I think learning really becomes the key and we also need to change the reputation of learning at work, right? So, Thanks a lot for that. Thank you very much. Thank you all for the chance. Thank you for being here with us. And well, as announced in the beginning, we also have some time left now for discussion. If so, this as if this has inspired you 
you can share some of the experience that you have made or um, anything that comes to your mind. And while doing so, I will start sharing my screen again so that we can also take a look to the etherpad again. That's it, yeah. So if I can share. Somebody would like to add something here, any comments and experiences? No, all right. Yeah, maybe also from my side, from our side at Continental, we also had a, a learning engagement campaign, as we call it, that was part of the future work initiative that we have running there with four different topics and there we made a similar experience in the way that you need and need to involve people in order to um, yeah make them curious about learning and um, see, and make them willing to learn to integrate that more in the in the working culture in the in the general in the company culture and had um, also different different topics as you showed us, but also kind of competitions and votings for a hashtag. And we sent out micro learning. So that was just as a, a short insider, as a glimpse, something that we made as or we that turned out to be very successful for us to really involve people. maybe another question to everybody um, i mean we had two uh, examples um, of events or um, uh, yeah initiatives that make the best out of a critical situations not being able to to do it physically uh, to put it in the virtual space um, do you think um, when this crisis is over uh, will be over which may take some time will we do more virtual uh, events to more communities um, will that um, persist well, I, I think that uh, what what we learn now is a skill that won't go away anymore I think you can see this already uh, that a lot of fairs and events and and so on people are really thinking about do we need that in a physical form in the future or is it enough to run it in a physical way every three times and two times digital i think the skills that people have now they that won't vanish and a lot of that will stay and i i can i can complement what what's what uh, simon says i i think exactly the same i think uh, a lot of things will simply diminish and uh, the, the 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 question is that i think people more and more ask what is the benefit if we have something face to face or what is the benefit if we have something totally virtually and online i think the question is really what makes sense and what i see and what i feel in my environment is that it's a lot about budgets and money i think we will have really financial restrictions maybe in learning and development and then everyone thinks that online is it's cheap it's for for free which we know it's not true but i think there is a big chance here that we keep this digitalization and learning and development running um, we should be pretty clear how important that is and we should really clearly state our usps because what i see on the other side and i'm working in the uh, hospitality business that in those industries uh, the question is shall we really educate people who are only in the business for two to three years yeah so really the importance of what is the value of learning especially in those times where learning itself needs to be agile is quite important true you're absolutely right thanks for this comment and here and well yes as you said and especially in this time in these times where we do not have so many appointments so many other places to be so it's also a great chance to take the to use this time for learning and 
well, communities can be a great accelerator for that. And well, with this, um, as also Rebecca mentioned in the post, you have the chance to hand in ideas for topics for further sessions for our next calls. In the last slide, I would like to share with you. Um, you have some links in here for the upcoming calls, the community calendar that we have, and you can suggest a topic as just mentioned in our marketplace and also the recording of this call will be available soon. And there you, you can also find the recordings of the previous sessions. And well, with this, again, a big thanks to all of you who were here with us today. We really appreciate that. And a special thanks again to the presenters and to the very interesting insights. Um, Simon and Madeline and Beate, it was really interesting. And with this, yeah, we wish you all the best. Stay healthy, stay at home for the next time. And which will be on July the 9th. <laughs> the next community call will be on July 9th. Perfect. Exactly. Thanks for that hint. <laughs> July 9th. And so, as um, we hear just Achim, also big thanks to the entire three C3 call team. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Spread the word if you like the format and take care. Bye. Let me just add, let me just add if uh, you have some more uh, additions to the Etherpad and questions, just write it down there. It will be open till a few days from up to now. Thanks. Until forever. Bye. Until forever. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, Scott. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.